right, let's look at another one. So in this case, it's already in that general form for us. Everything on one side, set equal to zero, and my quadratic term is positive. So in this case, my a value is 1, b is 3, and c is negative 10. We can pluck off those values. Let's plug them in and see what results out. So x equals negative b plus or minus b squared will give me 9 minus 4 times 1. Do I really need to write that? No, times c, negative 10, all over 2 times a. 2 times 1 is just 2. We can simplify as we go. So what do we get now? Negative 3 plus or minus square root of 9 plus 40. Because a negative times a negative gives us a positive. That's all over 2. So I've got negative 3 plus or minus what coming out of here? Square root of 49 is 7 all over 2. So what are my options in this case? x is equal to negative 3 plus 7 over 2, which will give me what? 4 divided by 2, whole number 2, easy. Or what's my other option for x? Negative 3 minus 7 divided by 2 is negative 10 divided by 2, which is negative 5. So in that case, the quadratic formula will always give us answers, solutions, those values, but what could we have done there in the very beginning? Could we have factored that pretty easily? Yes, because the factors I'm using are 5 and 2. So our solution to that, yes, contains 2 and negative 5, but in some cases, and in this example, it would have been easier just to solve it by factoring. We don't have to reinvent the wheel for that kind because we know how to solve it from before, and it's a lot quicker than this. So let's again check real quick just by factoring. I've got x squared plus 3x minus 10 is equal to 0. I have a 1 out on the front, and I have positive, negative. When I add, when I multiply, so I know one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. What combination factors of 10 will give us 3 when we add them together. So positive 5, negative 2. So if I take each piece, set it equal to 0, what x values do I have coming out? From the first, negative 5, check. From the second, positive 2, check. A lot faster. So we want to look in the beginning and see if we can factor it quickly we're going to go that route because it'll save us time and we're less likely to make mistakes. But if it doesn't factor, we can always plug it into the quadratic, evaluate it out. And the quadratic will always work for us. Even if we can factor it, like we've seen, we still get out those values. Just takes a little bit longer. So let's go ahead and use this next one. Let's solve, and it's telling us to use the quadratic formula. So we'll go that route. What needs to move? x squared is already positive, so I need to subtract 4x and 7 from both sides. So my a value is 1, b is negative 4, c is negative 7. Let's plug it in. x equals negative b, so the negative of a negative is a positive, plus or minus b squared. So negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, minus 4 times 1 times negative 7, all over 2. 2 times a, which is 1 in this case. So let's simplify. I've got 4 plus or minus 16 plus 28, all over 2. So underneath that radical, that radicand, is going to turn out to be what? Square root of 44 divided by 2. But is 44 a perfect square? No. So it's not going to evaluate out nicely like we've had before, where we get numbers, whole real numbers, out. They just might be fractions. In this case, we're still going to have radicals left over. So what can we break 44 up into? What perfect square and leftovers? 4 plus or minus 4 times 11. 
Whenever it's even, that should be our first try. So evaluating out of there, we get a factor of 2. And we can't hack away at 4 and 2 right this minute. Because if I take a 2 out of 4, I would also have to take it out of this term as well if I was going to cancel. But another way to look at it is to just take the division of each piece. So 4 divided by 2 gives me 2 out on the front. 2 divided by 2 gives me 1. So I'm just left with root 11. So those are our exact answers. We could approximate them. But our solution set, I've got 2 plus root 11 or 2 minus root 11. And we usually leave it in that form, so it's less to write. So go ahead and take the one on the next page, solve using the quadratic formula. Very similar to what we've just done, but the signs are going to be different. See what it changes. So I left off that previous problem because it's very similar, but what's different about this thing? Let me get it into that general form. I have positive 4x, negative 7. So the only thing that's different is the sign on my b term. And let's see what that changes, if it's super important. It is, but let's see why. So again, a is 1, b is positive 4, c is negative 7. So x equals negative b, plus or minus, b squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c all over 2 times a, which is 1. So we're dealing with the same numbers, but different result. So as we simplify, I've got negative 4 plus or minus this same value coming out. So we're looking at square root of 44 on the inside, all over 2. And again, we know we can break that up into 2 times the square root of 11 divided by 2. And as we look individually, what comes out of here? Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we have the same factors, but what about our signs that are different? I've got negative 2 on the front here, and I had a positive 2 in this case. That's going to change things drastically. So our solution set in the end here, negative 2 plus or minus root 11. So those signs are super important. Very important to remember. We need it in that form in the very beginning. Everything set equal to zero. So let's solve this next example using the quadratic formula. First thing to do, as always, get everything on one side, have it set equal to zero. So in this case, a, b, and c are all positive one. So let's evaluate. x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times 1 times 1, all over 2 times 1. So what do we get out here? Negative 1 plus or minus the square root of what? 1 minus 4 will give me negative 3 on the inside. So what about that radicand? It's negative, so what does that mean about my solutions? Do I have any real ones? No, I would have to deal with imaginaries, and we don't know how to handle that yet. So in this case, I've got a negative radicand. Negative radicand. So my solutions, they're not going to be real. So no real solution. We do have solutions, but they're imaginary. So whenever we come down to a negative radicand, we can just stop right there. I know my solutions aren't going to be real. So let's look at another one. I have 3x squared equal to 7 minus 2x. And we're going to solve that using the quadratic formula and then approximate those solutions using a calculator. Because it's hard to talk about where are those zeros actually happening if we have radicals involved. So first thing to do, you need to move it all. 3x squared is already positive, so we'll keep him need to add 2x to both sides, subtract 7. So now that we have that general form, a is 3, b is 2, c is negative 7, let's plug them in. x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared 
minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And you can evaluate as you go along if you want to. We're looking at negative 2 plus or minus the square root of what? So negative times a negative will give me positive in here. I've got 21 times 4. I'm looking at 84 plus another 4 will give me 88 underneath. All over 6. Okay. So is 88 a perfect square? No, but we can break it up into 1. So let's see. Even, first thing we should try is a factor of 4. So can we break up 88 into 4 times something else? What am I going to need? 22. And 22, its factors are 2 and 11, neither of which are perfect squares. So we know that 4 is the largest one we can take out. So I'm looking at negative 2 plus or minus 2 root 22 all over 6. And again, we can look individually. Negative 2 divided by 6 is negative 1 third. And again, 2 divided by 6 is 1 third. So I've got root 22 over 3. We can split it up in that way or even write it together. Doesn't matter, but my exact solution set is negative 1 plus or minus root 22 over 3. But picture-wise, on the x-axis, where are those two roots happening? I couldn't tell you. So we need to approximate them so we have a better idea of what they're sitting around. So we need a calculator, but let's evaluate. First option, if I choose the positive radicand, we can evaluate it in our calculator and it approximates to 1.2301. Or other option, if I choose the negative radicand, negative radical, excuse me, terminology, then we get out negative 1.8968. So I have one around positive 1.2, the other, around, other one around negative 1.9. We have a better idea than if we're just looking at that radical expression. So go ahead and take those last two, solve, approximate the first ones, and with the second one, solve using the quadratic formula. First one, first thing to happen, we have to move that 3. I need it in that general form. So A is 5, B is negative 8, C is negative 3. When we plug it into the quadratic formula, negative of a negative gives me a positive 8. Plus or minus 8 times 8 is 64, minus 4 times A times C, all over 2 times 5. So I've got 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 plus what value? So 15 times 4 will give me 60, all over 10. So adding on the inside, my radicand is looking like 124. Mm, it'll fit down here. 8 plus or minus square root 124 over 10. And can we simplify that? How can I break up 124 into a perfect square and something else. It's even, so the first one that I should try is 4. And we can indeed. I can break it up into 4 and 31, all over 10. So evaluating out of there, I've got 8 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 31, all over 10. So as we simplify, I've got 8 over 10 which will give me out, what? 8 divided by 10 simplifies down to 4 fifths. Plus or minus 2 over 10 is 1 fifth, so I have square root 31 over 5. So we have those common denominators. We could combine them together if we wanted to. But my two options for the approximations then. Positive root comes out to be 1.9135, around there, when we use our calculator and the negative root, negative 0.313, so pretty small. 
and we could graph it and actually look at the picture and see if those roots are around those values. You can always plug them back into the original, check and make sure that way as well. And with this last example, what happened? So we need to move everything to one side. Have it set equal to zero. A is one, B is negative one, C is positive one. So I've got X equals negative of a negative, gives me a positive, plus or minus B squared minus four A C, all over two. So I've got one plus or minus the square root of negative three. So what happened in that case? Not a real number. Not a real number. Whenever we have a negative radicand, we're dealing with imaginaries. We don't know how to work with those yet.